much ado about the Brits. Now, this might seem a little odd here, but, you know, they are formally putting pen to paper to the divorce settlement with the European Union. This was the process that started it, and this connection with Donald Trump is alive and well, because many argue that Brexit telegraphed the populist wave around the world that brought us, well, Donald Trump. And that Theresa May, the British Prime Minister, was indicating this is the formal beginning of saying goodbye to Europe. Take a look. On today of all days, we should be coming together as a united kingdom to get the best deal for Britain. Julian's all right, here's why we're watching that closely as well. If, if the Brits can get over their disagreements with this and the fact that the Scots aren't too keen on this, in fact, they might uh, vote on a referendum to reject that referendum, what does it mean for the populist wave and the stuff that brought us all the things you see out of Team Trump? To author, best selling uh, author at that, and Uber columnist Mark Stein. Mark, what do you make of that? That Brexit really got people reminded of the fact that conventional wisdom could be very, very wrong. And it did yeah. kind of, you know, set the stage for all the things we've seen since. How is this going to go? Well, it's relevant, I think, Neil, because uh, nobody wanted this except the people. 75% uh, <laughs> of the members of the House of Commons want to stay in the European Union, an even higher percentage of the House of Lords, an even higher percentage at the BBC and among the uh, City of London business class. The only people who wanted to leave the European Union were the British people. As they say on Broadway, uh, nobody likes it but the public. And that's what, what happened with Brexit. Nobody wanted it but the public. So this is a classic example of the Milton Friedman line. Uh, you don't wait to elect the right people to do the right thing. You f create the conditions whereby the wrong people are forced to do the right thing. And that's what the British people did. They forced uh, every major political party, the Houses of Parliament, to to quit the European Union. It was the people's victory uh, without the help of David Cameron or the Labour Party or any major political party, even Sinn Féin. The so-called Irish revolutionaries pathetically uh, want to cast off the tyrannous yoke of the British Crown just so they can be some lousy province of the European Union. Even Sinn Féin, uh, so-called Irish revolutionaries, were in favour of the EU. Uh, and Theresa May and her, and her role yeah. in, in, in a prior post. Uh, but let's yeah. step back and, and, and look at what's going on here and link the Donald Trump problems with what many say will still be problems with breaking off uh, Britain's, British ties with the rest of the Union. Now, now we should posit here, it, it's not the end of the world for either Europe or, or, or Britain here, but the way it's been been sold uh, and, and reading the British press, very similar to the way the Trump administration has been covered reading the American press. Um, right. What do you make of that? Well, I think everybody uh, in, in our elites uh, wants to take the view that there's no alternative to the globalist view of the world, that uh, all sensible people essentially agree as they would round the table at Davos right. uh, that, that this is the way the world is and there are no alternatives. And, and the fact is, uh, if there's a justification for elites, they have to be smart elites. And we have had stupid uh, and rather self-serving elites, uh, and people have pushed back against it. And they push back because they see their lives getting worse. They see their economic prospects getting worse. Uh, in America, uh, a, a generation or two ago, if you had a high school education, you could do a well-paying job, live on a, a nice three-bedroom house with a big size yard in a nice non-criminal part of town and raise your children. Now you take out a six-figure loan to get a worthless degree and you're living worse than your high school educated parents and grandparents were. Uh, the fact is the system that, that works for the elites jetting around between New York and London and Hong Kong and Davos, but it doesn't work for the people they presume to govern. You know what I worry about, too? I don't know whether we're missing, in, in, in your old haunt, a, a Maggie Thatcher moment or in our country, a Ronald Reagan moment. Mm -hmm. We don't give a darn about the way the media is portraying something or the way you are going forward with something that you, you are so sure of your convictions that you, you keep plowing through. But I don't see a consistent read even in Britain about how to proceed here with Brexit, uh, nor do I see 
uh, any consistent signals out of uh, Donald Trump or Republicans how to proceed with their agenda. I, sometimes I wonder if they're even sure what their agenda is. Well, I, th I think Trump ought to remember that he's in a kind of analogous uh, position uh, to, say, Nigel Farage and UKIP over Brexit. Uh, it was the people. It was, uh, it was a sudden uh, demographic that put him over the top in key states in November. And just as the Conservative Party under David Cameron were no friends to Brexit, uh, Paul Ryan and co. are not necessarily friends of the Trump agenda. And I'm sure Trump knows that, and Trump supporters certainly know that. Uh, and that's why it's, it's important for him to be focused on that Milton Friedman line, essentially forcing Paul Ryan to do things that Paul Ryan doesn't necessarily want to do. Because he's traditionally been, you know, on immigration, he's traditionally been pretty much a, a kind of semi-open borders type. Uh, so if he wants to get on board and build that Mexican wall, uh, Trump is well advised uh, not, not to just go on his say-so over that. He has to remember that a big chunk of the Republican Party is as opposed to his agenda as the Democrats are. Yeah, I always subscribe to the view that there were many of those the Republican leaders who probably frowned more in his election than Democrats did, but yeah, we shall that's see. True. Uh, very good seeing you, my friend. Uh, Best-selling author, Mark Stein. Thanks a lot, Nick.